Guys, welcome back to another episode of Relab Life. If you don't know already, what we do here in Relab is um, digital design, UI and UX. But most of the time, our project would be around transactional websites. Like, an e-commerce is a good example of it. So, on this episode, I'd like to talk to you about uh, f- the five key tips or some hot tips for me that I can think of that's going to help your website boost its conversion rate from a homepage perspective. Hope it brings some value to you and hope you enjoy the content. So guys, ultimately, if you think about an e-commerce website, uh, the ultimate goal is to make some sales. So what you want to do is try to convert your website visitors to be potential buyers, right? So there are many ways of doing this. But today we're going to talk about specifically in the homepage, what is it that you could do to improve its conversion rate. So Relab, um, the team that I lead here, we work on a lot of projects like this. So there are some specific patterns that we've seen that I think is worth sharing with you. So if you're thinking about starting uh, an an online um, shop or an e-commerce site, whether you're selling products or whatever, hopefully some of these tips will help you. So to do this, I think it's best to talk you through some examples. So what I'll do now is I'll screenshot um, some examples that we've worked on before and share with you some of the key points and decision-making process and ultimately give you some tips on what to do or what to look out for when you're designing an e-commerce website. So there are three websites here that I'm going to take you through um, very, very briefly. So the first one is a website called minijumbuck.com.au. The other one is reese.com.au and the other one is politics.com.au. So they're quite different websites. When I say different, it's just different types of um, industries and uh, scale as well. So I'll start from the smallest one because I think that's probably the one that is most valuable when you're trying to start something new. Okay, so in minijumbuck.com.au, hot tip number one is to always have a persistent search bar. When I talk about the persistent search bar, I'm referring to this area right here. Um, And the reason why it needs to be persistent is because it's going to be a lot easier for people to find it. So what you want to do is try to make the search bar as visible as possible. Uh, and you'll see it across these other sites as well. So another alternative is to kind of have a prompt to the search bar. For example, what we've done here in politics, it's pretty much a search button that will bring you to a search situation. Um, Then in here, you can search for a product, for example, Blazor, and it'll give you some suggestions. So when I say persistent, that means it's it's available. And as you scroll down the page, um, some of these websites will hide it. But then as you scroll up, um, it will show the search bar again. Uh, same with this one here. So you're scrolling down the page, but as you soon as as soon as you scroll up, um, the search bar will appear. Uh, so what you want to do is make it really easy for people to be able to make a, a search uh, based on their keywords or or. Um, search phrases. Um, And this is an example, I might be searching for a quilt because that's what they sell most of the time. And there you go. So it's easy. I can hit search the button over here. I can hit enter on my keyboard or I can just go to one of the product recommendations right here. Um, So tip number one is to have an easy to access search bar. Now tip number two, you want to make sure that the product offerings or the category offerings are very easy for users to get into or to dive deep into. So if I was to take Mini Jumbuck as an example, um, they've got pretty much their main categories up the top here. So we can see quilts, mattress toppers, pillows, blankets, protectors, wadding, kids, clothing, footwear, giftware. So essentially these are their level one categories and we're not hiding it under a shop button or anything like that because we feel during the process we feel um, that it's simple enough uh, that it's not way too complicated that what we want to do is just offer them pretty much straight away to the users so in doing that um, it, if I just quit click quilts it'll just take me to the quilts page and it'll offer me 
uh, the quilt products in there. So, and if I click, for example, oops, sorry. And if I click another category like mattress toppers as an example, uh, it'll take me to mattress toppers. So it's very easy for me to get into a certain category straight away without having to um, do many, many, too many clicks. If I go to Reese, how uh, um, however, now Reese is a is a uh, is a bathroom, kitchen, plumbing supply company, so they have. Uh, and a lot of the business are B2B, business to business, instead of business to customers. Their product line though is a lot more complicated than Mini Jumbox. So even looking at the, um, the primary categories that are presented here, so tapware and accessories, uh, toilets, ba basins, showers, etc. These are only their main categories or the most popular ones, but they're actually more than this. And under tapware and accessories, for example, there's a level two, which is basin, uh, tapware, shower bath or bath tapware, kitchen laundry tapware, and so on. And there's another level three right below it. Um, so it's actually a lot more complicated. And when we're doing that, then it's gonna be difficult for us to present level one categories on the main um, navigation bar. Um, unlike Mini Jumbuck, because it's a little bit more simple, that we could do that straight away. So the consideration here was to hide it under shop by product. Uh, and there was also another one, which is shop by industry, based on the different um, industries that tradies are in. So whether it's bathroom, kitchen, plumbing, irrigation, pool, civil, or HVAC R, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Um, I'm gonna get into the politics example now. In politics instead, because they lead with a lot of campaign stories. So campaigns is one of the main navigation and everything else that's under shop. Um, because what we want to highlight in the main na navigation is more about newness. Uh, other than shop I'm talking about is you've got newness, the different occasions because people shop by occasions, whether it's for work, for weddings, for weekends, casuals and stuff like that, uh, by sale and by the different campaigns that's running around at the moment. So because of that, to use the real estate at the top bar, we've hidden um, the primary product categories under the shop button. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Tip number three is to tell a story with a logical order on the homepage I'm talking about. So when I say story, again, I'm gonna start with Mini Jumba. Uh, make sure that your content that's being presented in the homepage makes sense from a hierarchy point of view. So if we look at this as an example, we've got um, some, of the, some of the main campaigns that are happening. Uh, and because it was International Women's Day, we've got one of these banners as well. But you've got this hero banner, which is essentially, usually the rule of the thumb is whatever main campaign that are happening. Um, and you've got a little bit of a, a value proposition over here, which is handcrafted Australian made wool bedding. That's kind of the main thing with um, Mini Jumba. And then you've got some categories here. So featured categories, including quilts, mattress toppers and pillows. Why are they here? Because based on the data, we've learned that these are the three main categories that people get into pretty much most of the time. And then you've got another popular button here, which is find a stockist. So where do I find um, a mini jumbo quilt, for example, and I can buy it in Meyer or Dares or whatever. Um, so that's why they are here. And then you want to tell a little bit of a story about the brand. Uh, so some people would skip through this, but some people would take the opportunity to find out more about the brand and they'll watch the video. Uh, that way it's a bit more engaging rather than reading about the brand. And some, um, some blog contents uh, or fresh blog contents that are constantly updated. Mini Jumbug is really good at that. So there are some articles about um, their wool and a lot of how to's as well. Um, and you've also got some more value proposition about why Mini Jumbuck and register your warranty and stuff like that, yeah? So if you look at that, the, the order or the way that the information and the blocks are being presented are quite logical because these are, most of the time, people would access what they want up there, uh, which is the product category buttons 
uh, on the on the navigation, but then you've got some of these promotional banners as well that are more like the leading campaigns, and then you've got the most popular categories. So those are very important for this specific uh, website. Now in Reese, the live site reese.com.au actually is is actually missing some of the key features that's meant to be there. So I'll I'll bring one of the uh, uh, examples or not examples but uh, the ones that we worked on what it's meant to look like so other than um, the main navigation that we went through um, you've got the hero banner at the moment it's just duplicated but similar to mini jamba you've also got these what we call custom blocks um, so these blocks are meant to be supporting blocks that may be product categories but they may be um, other things as well so, or, or features that the website has. Reese would have a bath bathroom in a renovation guide. There's Max, which is their business to business um, uh, tool that tradies use to manage their accounts and stuff. Um, but if we scroll further down a little bit, sorry. Um, you've got more uh, popular features that the website users would use, which is um, find your nearest Reese outlet. So that's similar to find a stockist in Mini Jamba and other tools and resources that people might want. But most of the time, again, people would just use this or they would just look at one of the banners and click on it. Um, as long as users get into a product listing page, which is say similar to this at the end of the day, um, then if the website is designed well, then they can use the filters, the faceted filter on the sidebar easily to find what they want. Um, in politics, it's similar. So we've got some leading campaigns over here and some blocks to other categories or promotionals then some newness, and maybe some editorial content down here. And a few similar suspects, like the store finders, uh, to find a, a stockist, or not a stockist for politics, but a store, a branch, uh, Instagram, um, and another Instagram block. Okay, so an important factor to think about is how do you present content in a logical order that it starts from the most important one, down to telling a story, basically. Hot tip number four is about prompting users to scroll down um, to the page so they can see more offers and values for them. So a lot of the times, people don't know that there are more under the top fold of the websites or below the top fold of the website. That's why in most of these websites that you're seeing that we've designed, um, the banners aren't very big or the hero image aren't very big. So what we want to do is actually to give users a hint that there are actually more content down below that might be useful for you. So Mini Jump Up, again, as an example, we've made the banner to be as short as that. Uh, but you need to think about it. Um, you need to, I guess the challenge is how do you present that nicely visually as well, um, that they know um, there are more content down below the banner. So I'm talking about these ones down here. Um, if I was just to land in this website, then I'll see, oh, there's actually more content and I'll scroll down and I'll scroll further down and I'll figure out, oh, they've actually got some of these content that might be useful for me. Similar with these other ones as well. Um, so what you want to do is make the banner shorter and not take the whole space of the top fold and scroll further down and then I might find something that I that I would like same with this one yeah so make the top banner or the hero banner um, short enough that you can or, or that users could actually see more content down below tip number five is don't forget to highlight your unique value proposition. So when I say your unique value proposition, it's what makes your online site different or what makes it unique. So in Mini Jumbuck, they're really highlighting some of it up here. 
uh, it's about international shipping that they ship internationally now. Um, they've also dropped it here, which is sleep better with mini jumbuck handcrafted Australian wood, uh, Australian made wool bedding. Um, and then you'll find it down here as well, which is why mini jumbuck. And then I can click on it and then have a read on what makes the product unique. Um, in Reese, it's pretty much the same. Um, you've got some of these uh, lines up here, which is pick up and return from 450 plus locations, world leading brand, expert advice and, customer, and customized service. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for in Reese. But some of the other things are actually the features itself, which is some of these tools that are presented here are actually a strong value proposition for them because some of the other competitors don't actually have that. In politics, um, obviously they make it available up here, free shipping in Australia. Uh, a phone number is there easily and readily available if you need it. Uh, some um, payment methods as well up here, which is after pay or zip pay. And as you scroll down the page, looking at the content towards the bottom, you'll also find some of these stuff here which is free shipping, customer care, easy returns in store and online. So where you can, and when the real estate allows, try to highlight what makes your online shop different. So that's it guys. Um, hopefully those five tips are, are useful to you and your online shop. And um, I think the whole point here is try to embrace the whole process of learning, understanding the data, testing it and iterating it as well. Because if, if you pick, I guess, pure online player like ASOS or the Iconic or um, realestate.com.au and stuff like that, then these companies would invest a lot in testing, iterating constantly to make sure that the experience is optimized, that ultimately they can increase and always increase the conversion rate average on each of their pages. So what you want to do is try to embrace that process and learn from it and try to learn from other websites as well look at the data um, there are so many tools out there that allows you to learn what users behavior are like in the website as a matter of fact I'll link it down below as well in the description um, I've got another video that we've done um, previously about how to learn about your um, online or website visitors or their behaviors basically it's a very easy process um, hopefully you find it useful guys and if you haven't subscribed already please do so and I'll chat to you next time.